Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Katerina Freire, and welcome to the EMA FE info session on the Veterinary Medicines uh, Information website, the public face of the U Union Product Database. My name is Katerina Freire, as I said, and I'm the Communication and Change Management Officer at the Veterinary Division at the European Medicine Agency. This is the fifth uh, joint event organized by the EMA and the Federation of Veterinarians of Europe following the implementation of the Veterinary Medicinal Products Regulation. We will have another session scheduled for the 23rd of May, but the topic will be on the list of antimicrobials reserved for the treatment of certain infections in humans. We plan to open the registration process in mid-March. Today's info session, oriented at, uh, towards animal health practitioners, will include a presentation of the, of the um, portal's benefits, functionalities and improvements. Participants will be able to follow also a demonstration on basic functionalities of the website and I will show you some tricks on how to search products and how to use the filters and use the product compar comparison. And now, Piotr, the floor is yours. I'm just going to uh, unmute you. Okay. Please. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Katerina. And the ladies and gentlemen, dear esteemed, esteemed colleagues and distinguished guests, it's a great pleasure uh, for me to be here with you today on behalf of Federation of Veterinarians of Europe. I would like to welcome everyone of you to this jointly organized webinar with the European Medicine Agency. The webinar today is the second webinar of Veterinary Medicine website, as Katrina said, the public face of Union Product Database. This is the fifth joint webinar. The European Medicine Agency and the Federation of Veterinarians of Europe are organizing together. The previous ones focused on pharmacovigilance, the categorization of antimicrobials, and the data collection on cells and use of antimicrobials. Two more are planned this year, both in the field of antimicrobial resistance. One on the list of antimicrobials, which are uh, re reserved for human use only, and one on the use of antimicrobials under the cascade, which is a very important issue from a practical point of view. We like to thank EMA for the opportunity to work shoulder to shoulder on what is actually our work, supporting the vets in optimizing veterinary medicine. The aim of keeping these uh, webinars is to inform and discuss with our colleagues in the field of mostly veterinarians, but not only, the implications of coming into force of all the new medicines requirements. Today is our second joint webinar on the veterinary medicine concerning public portal of Union Product Database. Why organize the second webinar, anyone can ask. First of all, this portal is a great tool, which we want every veterinarian to know about it. I'm a practitioner, so I know what I'm talking about. Secondly, since the first webinar, the portal has undergone many improvements and has become more, much more user-friendly and easy to share. Today, our colleagues from the agency will demonstrate with some real practice examples how veterinary practitioners for a shortage of veterinary medicine can search the portal for alternative treatments. The portal allows you to search and view information of authorized veterinary medicines in the European Union and European Economic Area, irrespective of the authorization route, to find out in which member state a specific veterinary medicine is available, oh, no. information which could help to identify potential treatment alternatives. In plenty of time will, let, will be left for your questions or feedback, as Katarina has mentioned. Participant to actively take part, ask questions, 
and contributed to this discussion. Your diverse experience and perspective enrich the dialogue and contribute to the overall success of this event. Thank you for your participation. I see at the moment 170 people. And I wish you a productive and enlightening webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Piotr. Before I start, and I would like to ask everyone to keep to mute their uh, microphones, please, because that interferes very much with the recording and, and the, the, the flow of the presentation. Thank you very much. So uh, let's go back. So the UPD, uh, as I mentioned before in the introduction, I am the, the Communication and Change uh, Management Officer at the um, Veterinary Division. And I'm also the, the product owner for the Veterinary Medicinal Product um, Information website, which is the public face of the UPD. Um, very quickly, and for those who are less familiar with the term product owner, um, a product owner is someone that is responsible for the development of a product. In this case, the veterinary medicinal uh, portal, and, and ensuring its value uh, for the user and ensuring that the portal is also aligned with its golden purpose. For that to be achieved, it is my role to assess the needs and collect feedback from the users together with the development team to improve their usability. So, in a nutshell, what is the Veterinary Med Medicines Information website? The Veterinary Medicines website is, is the public face of the UPD system. It contains information of all veterinary medicinal products authorized in EU and EEA, including public assessment reports and product information. In the public portal, you can also find information on homeopathic or parallel trade products. The product data is provided by the national competent authorities in the cases if it's an authorization, a product that is authorized by a mutual recognition, decentralized procedure, subsequent procedure, and or if it's just a national authorized product in a country. If it's a, um, a, a centrally authorized product, so uh, an overreaching authorization, then the data is provided by the EMA. If you cannot find a product, uh, please check with your competent authority either, and they either have not been created or the record status of the product might be set to provisional and that's why not, it's not visible. But moving on, the Veterinary Medicines website is also a, a database with non-commercial confidential information for these centrally authorized procedures, for these nationally authorized procedures, and for these mutual and decentralized procedures. It's easy accessible via a laptop or a personal computer, a smartphone, a tablet with access to, it, to the internet. It's translated into the 24 EU official languages, plus Icelandic and Norwegian. But most important, this information is free of charge. The... Users can use this portal to consult up-to-date uh, information on veterinary medicines for the EU EEA. It is important to highlight that the information on the veterinary medicines website that was usually published on the EMA corporate website has not been updated since January 2022 and it's being gradually removed. So um, the work is ongoing it, it's, um, and uh, it's, we acknowledge it's taking a little bit longer than we anticipated, but we appreciate your patience in the meantime. But this is in the, it is in the portal that you will find the latest update information. Finally, how can this portal be of use for the vets? So the veterinarians can access this portal to compare, for example, medicines to see if what is the best option. They can check the authorization and the availability status of a product. So uh, the product might be authorized in their country, but might not be available because in the end we do not, um, it is the marketing uh, authorization holder responsibility and decision to decide if a product is going into a specific market. But also the portal can help the veterinarians search for potential alternatives or to use in the upcoming uh, support of the cascade use of medicines. 
But where does this all information come from? So this I have here a very uh, overall sc sc uh, screen that will show you that everything starts with UPD. And the UPD, as I said before, is the single source of information in all authorized veterinary medicines uh, in the EU EEA member states. The UPD feeds into the Union Pharmacovigilance Database, which is a system that supports the recording of suspected adverse events, signal detection and data analysis, in, 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 a, in a short, to make the medicines safe. The UPD also feeds into the antimicrobial sales in use platform, which was launched in January 20, in 29 of January 2024. And this platform was developed to support the mandatory collection and reporting of data on antimicrobial sales and, um, in, and use data of, uh, in animals. With this data, we, uh, it, the goal is to help strengthen EU action against antimicrobial resistance in humans and animals under the one apple approach. But the presentations show you also a little bit else. They show you that there is public information. Even though these three databases are restricted, there is public information. You have the public information on adverse event reports. I will show a little later on the presentation where you can find them. But later in 2024, we, the incident reports will also start to be public and published. For the antimicrobial sales and use platform, the antimicrobial sales that was 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 already public uh, for sales, so during under the ESVAC project. But from 2025, antimicrobial use data will also be publicly available. But the Union product database itself has its own uh, public channel, where, where is what we are gathered here today to, to present and talk about. It's the Veterinary Medicines Information website. So, where did all start? How do we get here? The Veterinary Medicines Information website was designed following a user experience back in 2021, and it was launched in January 2022, the same date as the underlying Union Product Database itself. Since its launch and throughout 2022, a series of bugs and improvements were delivered by the team. However, at the agency and together with the important feedback of our stakeholders and a regulatory network, we kept identifying areas of improvement and the need for new functionalities. Uh, just let me pause here a moment to acknowledge the work and the feedback we receive for all these uh, stakeholders. It has been fundamental and pivotal for us to improve this portal. But then in 2023, and just with a one year of uh, uh, already with a one year of experience on our back, we decided to revamp the portal. And for that, we organized a few sessions, um, a few sessions that uh, we collected feedback from key stakeholders. So the work begins uh, in June, and in October we began to deliver a important improvements and add new features, all to the benefit of the end user. In this case, the animal health practitioner, the veterinary, and also to the public. 2024 a reach, and in January, we keep the deploying new features. And as of Monday, we have delivered around 90% of the improvements. And that brings us to today. I also like to share with you a few li little bit of figures. Um, we have collected a few metrics and analytics of, um, of the visitors and the audience members. And uh, we only started to collect in June. We didn't have the, 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 the tool available before June 2022. But we, the numbers show a progress, steady but increasing uh, number of visitors that consult the, the public portal on a daily basis. But more interesting is the geographic distribution of our, um, or of our viewers. Almost 90%, 80% are based in the Europe continent. I'd like to point out that the top, in the top five, the third country that most visits our portal is the, actually the United States, which I find is very interesting. So it means that also externally and outside of Europe, people are looking into what we do. So, with this brief introduction, I will now go into what brought us all here today. I will start with the demo. So, here we go. 
So this is the uh, the homepage of the Veterinary Medicine Information website, which we usually kindly and like to call it the UPD Public Portal. Um, we have, as you can see, we have dedicated a, quite a few uh, special attention to the website design, uh, particularly the, to the mobile version. Initially, we had a big image, but we decided to remove it. And now you have the information that is aligned in a more compact way. Why? Because although uh, the large majority of the uh, users still access the portal via a laptop or a, or a, or a personal computer, a desktop, it is, we also have a lot of people who access it via tablet or mobile version. And by compacting this information, it will be easier to reach the information that the user is looking for. So let me start already to show one of the key feature, features of the, the portal. As you can see here, if you type www.medicines.health.europa.eu, you will come into the what is called the language page. So this is the first encounter you have with a portal. And here you can see that we have available for you the, 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 the chance for you to select the language that you want to. I can navigate um, in, uh, in uh, obviously in my uh, home language, so in Portuguese, or I can change it to Italian. You will see that and there are d different names. I would like to highlight that there are some still missing um, um, translations, but we, it's going to be addressed, but I'll talk a little bit there about that further down the uh, presentation. So for now, we stick with English. I think it's the safest uh, for now. So on the top, you have several um, uh, menus. You have the search medicines, medicine index, substance index, what's new and about this website. About this website is just a landing page where it explains where the data comes from, the language policy and the data protection. And the what's new is uh, that you can also see not only on the landing page, but on a dedicated section, it's where you have inf immediate information of all the products that have been updated or been added to the portal. So you can see that today we have quite a few products that have been updated, but if you just want to see which products were the new products, then you see that to, from today, we have three new products in the portal. The portal is updated on a daily basis, which means that every, every, every uh, amendment that is being done by a national competent authority or a marketing authorization holder, and I explain how they can change the data in the EPD, is um, visible on the following day. Um, the, it is updated, so any addition is visible on the following day. When it comes to the deletion process, the 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 pro, the it, the time frame is a little bit longer, but we are working to improve that as we speak. Um, we also have uh, here on top uh, medicine and substance substance index. This is still going is still undergoing a lot of work, so. It is uh, going to be updated in the case of the medicine index. We're going to improve this, um, this section for products that are authorized in multiple countries where we combine in one single name the product and below all the flags, which means all the, the places where the product is available and the product name will change according to your language selection on top. So you don't have to be limited only to English. However, if the product only has one language because it's a national authorization so it's only have greek you only see the greek name we and if, for example if you have a product that has five different uh, languages or the name is in five different language and your sixth language is not one of them the system will default back to english but those are improvements that are going to be delivered in the upcoming uh, releases so Let's to uh, come back to the very important part of the portal, which is the search area. And this is where veterinarians can use this, um, this portal to, for their daily practice and to use it to, to play around with, to find the products they need. So as you can see on the left hand side, we have several options for filtering. We have, you can select products by um, name, by active substance, by target species, 
authorization in or available in. This is a very important difference that I'm going to explain to you uh, later on. And you have also route of administration, ATC vet code, the product status, if it's authorized, not authorized or suspended. For example, you can see here from the product cards that we are looking into all products that are immediately here are authorized. But if I move a little bit closer to further down, we will definitely going to see some products that are not authorized. But this is no for particular reason. It's just to let you know. Here it is, for example, we have here one product that, although is authorized in Bulgaria or has a, a marketing authorization in Bulgaria, it's not authorized there anymore. So this is um, some important information that you can find immediately in the product card. So uh, the product card was also revamped in a way that um, so you can see immediately what type if this product interests you. So we selected together with the feedback collected from some important stakeholders, including veterinarians, we present in this product card the immediate information that can be useful for your daily practice. The active substance, the route of administration, the pharmaceutical form, the target species, the authorized then, if it's authorized in your country, and the product status. One thing is missing here, and I'll show you now, it's actually the available in. And why does, does none of this product show available in? Because this information is, this is where I come back and say, where is the, uh, the action of the marketing authorization holder on the data that is available? This is where the, product, the, the marketing authorization holder says if the product is indeed available in the country. So I'm going to, I just selected Onsiora, look for some examples that were very, ex that could explain. And here in Onsiora, this is a centrally authorized product, which means that the company has an authorization that allows them to market the product in all EU countries plus EU and EEA. I have Iceland here and we have uh, Norway also somewhere. Here it is. But you can see there is the difference of flags between authorized and available in. And this is an example of how the portal can help you understand if the indeed the product is available for in your country or if it's available in a neighboring country and you can actually it's you can actually retrieve the product from there so i have met, talked a little bit about authorized in and available in i have also talked a little bit about the 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 uh product status so if it's valid not authorized or suspended we 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 established a difference between not authorized and suspended because suspended might be temporary and the product might go back again to the market so we have three different status that you can see but you can also look for products yourself and you can use either use the top bar here or you can actually uh use the filters here. I'm going to ex explain, for example, if I want to look for a, um, a product, I don't know, let's look for melox meloxicum, an active substance meloxicum. And I want to see, I want to see all products that we, for which meloxicum can, um, which, for which the target species are allowed. So for example, let's add cut. Uh, we can add multiple choices, so you don't have to do one at a time. You can definitely add more. So here, for example, I can add dog. But if you don't want to type it, and for example, you want to, to select multiple types of um, cattle, you just press control and then it keeps selecting. So this is a simple way you can use the portal to select products. And then obviously you need to press apply the system will go and search for products that have the combination of all those filters that you just included as you can see now we have 43,139 products registered in the UPD public portal and now we're going to see uh, how many the system will retrieve hopefully today um, here it is and then we have 184 results and from here you can just then go and available in and select your country to see if the product is available in and you just select them. So this is a very way and a very simple way to, 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 to search for the products. 
Now, um, I will also want to um, talk a little bit about the um, the um, the product detail page, and I am going to select the Onsior, the one that we have shown before. We also dedicated a lot of attention to the product detail page and we reorganized information in a way we felt it would be more useful and more intuitive for the veterinary and the general public. In, in, initially, you have the product identification for the, for the four key uh, elements, so product medicine name, active substance, target species, route of administration. If this is something that indeed uh, is of interest of the veterinary, you can scroll down and see more Im important information. You have the active substance and strength. So here you have the strength included. You have the pharmaceutical form. Here we have, this is an improvement to be added to the portal. We do not uh, need withdrawal periods for cats and dogs. So this will be a, should be a conditional display. This is something to be improved. So this row will be obviously eliminated for uh, products that are for uh, non-food non producing animals. You have the ATC vet code, the legal status of supply, so if it's prescription and over-the-counter, authorization status, and again, all the countries that has a valid marketing authorization, but at the same time, the countries where the product is actually available. You have the package description, and here below we have condensed more uh, other type of information that probably are not as relevant for the vet, but could be very relevant for other users. And this includes the type of, uh, if it's a marketing authorization, the legal basis, who is the marketing authorization holder, when was the product first initially adopted, uh, who is the responsible authority, European Commission. And this I would like to highlight that every time you see a, a product that has as responsible um, authority European Commission. If you see something that it's not correct or you like to ask more questions, the responsible authority is the EMA. So you just go to Ask EMA and send us a question. And the date of change authorization status. I will also like to highlight that um, here you have um, uh, did, uh, we organize the documents as you can see here. So centrally authorized products have in one single file, the summary of product characteristics, the labeling, the package leaflet, and we have that and I'm that compiled file of all documents. You have it in English, but obviously here, if you just click here, you will have other, the other, ver other uh, languages and you just look for yours. We are also uh, going to improve the, the language visibility on the documents. And here you have the public assessment reports for uh, for the for the product, I would also like to highlight that you have here a very important um, link to the adverse event reports for the for the veterinary medicinal products, and if you click here, it will bring you directly to a the Eudra Vigilance uh, European of uh, Eudra Vigilance, the European database of suspected adverse events, and here again you can again choose your language. So let's go with English just for for ease. And then you can search for a report for either uh, via by selecting the active substance or selecting the product. So in this case, we are in Onsior. We can just go go to letter A. Did, sorry, select products here. Go to the letter O. Or if you want, you just type in Onsior. And then if you select the system will retrieve uh, information that will show you data regarding adverse events reporting, uh, number of cases, by species, by breed, by country. So I, I, it is, uh, I, I would recommend, and I, I um, and I, I cannot uh, understress or un to stress more the importance of the role in uh, uh, against. Um, or the, the importance of veterinarians for the prevention. The veterinarians are the first line of defense and they have a critical role in the, the reporting of adverse events. And you are the ones who actually uh, 
do a crucial work to to because you can you can detect and you can report uh, any intended reactions on animal animals, including lack, lack of efficacy. So I would advise the the veterinarians also to dedicate some time to this. And if you have more questions about pharmacovigilance or you want to we'll learn a little bit more, absolutely just reach out to us. We're also going to organize a few um, activities this year. So we continue to then to the, um, so this is basically what uh, a cap look like. I'm going to show now the difference, just, just, I'm not going to go into all the details, but for example, you can see here that this is an MRPDCP product. This is a Belgian product. Uh, and you can see that is a, a reference member state. So it means that Italy is the original member state that authorizes product, but this authorization can be, uh, but uh, the authorization was applicable to all these countries. So this is a way you can also uh, see the difference between um, products. And also, uh, if you change the product name, you see here that the because it's a Belgian product, Belgium have has four, uh, three official languages. So you can see it in Dutch, in German, and in French together with the English uh, name. We move then to finally just for just to show you how a national product is looks like. So you, I selected specifically a Bulgarian uh, product. So you can see that the information is written in Bulgarian, and this is because the product only exists in Bulgaria. So it makes sense that only the, the that the information should be read in Bulgarian. Now, how to best use this? Um, this portal for your daily practice. You can type any uh, medicine. You can use this medicine, uh, is this search bar. This is not Google, please. So don't think this is like Google. It's, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it has a lot of functionalities. But this search bar, you can type any name of any product here. For example, the ones we just used on CR, And the system will, and if you click search, the system will push all uh, return all the product cards with all the products that have the name that have in the name the word onsior and and then from there you can go and search for the products you need but this is not the only way it's and you can see that you have six results regarding osior but this is not the only way to to look for information you can Sometimes you don't remember the name of a product and you just want to find a, uh, a, a painkiller for dogs in Portugal. So, so I would let uh, just a, a, a side note. I am not a veterinarian. I ask for examples for veterinarians. So if I use the wrong active substance, I apologize. It's just because I'm not a veterinarian. So for, for argument's sake, a veterinarian in Portugal is looking for a painkiller for a dog. And what we can do is I'm going to use uh, here meloxicum. I'm going to use then the um, dog. And I want the products that are available in Portugal. So I select Portugal and then I make apply. And then I wait for the system to give me a whole list of products in Portugal that contains these three key words. The portal is a little bit slow today, apologies, um, but this is what a demo is. The portal returns zero. And I'll say, okay, interesting. So what we can do is, okay, so I'm going to look for a different painkiller. So instead of meloxicum, I can delete meloxicum and I can go and choose a different one, a different painkiller. I know that it's not the same, but it's still a painkiller. So I will type this one and I will do apply. Again, I keep dog and available in Portugal and then the system should retrieve, hopefully, more results. So now this, the, the portal is thinking. And here we have, we have two, two products available in Portugal that combine the three, the three key terms, the active substance you're looking for, the species and available in. But, if you don't want to use this, this um, filters on the side, we also made this bar useful in the sense that you can actually type dog and 
And I cannot stress this enough. It has to be and in uppercase. And then you type phyrocopsic, phyro, because you press, you do search. Oops, sorry. Go back again, otherwise it's not going to return. It's to be and. And it works exactly the same way as applying the filters on the left menu. So uh, once you get the results, you can uh, do something that it's available for um, uh, for uh, here it are. So you have, if I combine just the words dog and pyrocopsic, you get 109 results. If I want to export the results, I have the possibility. This will be exported in a CSV file. Um, the, currently, the file is still has still uh, needs some improvements, but the file can be easily transformed into a data in an Excel file if you know how to do it by separate transforming the data into columns, and then you can select. Uh, this is one example that um, that can be done by a vet. For example, I want as a vet, I want to. Um, I'm looking for a, a, this medicine, depo. Medrol. If I don't know the full word or the full name, the system will also suggest something. Because this bar is prepared to uh, retrieve results that have the word in the, either in the product name or in the uh, active substance and target species. So in this case, we have only one, um, one product. We can click in. We understand immediately this is not English, so it means that this product is authorized in Greece. So if uh, someone from Cyprus or Greece would like to access the product, they can do it. Uh, another example that a vet might want to look is, for example, I don't know, benzapenicillin and cattle. Search, oh, again. Uppercase, not lowercase, otherwise the system will not return. Again, press and um, and then the system will return. There are numerous ways you can use this portal to your benefit. So you can see that if you type this uh, uh, benzanil penicillin and cattle, you get 436 uh, products. And for example, you see that you have products that are not are authorized, not authorized, and you can just select the ones that are of interest of you and just type here and then apply the filter and the filter will be, you will no longer have 436, you'll have a lower number. There are very numerous ways you can use this. And there are also uh, other examples we, you can try at your, uh, um, by yourself. You can also combine um, here we go, we got less numbers. You can also combine two active substances because sometimes, well, in this case, you can see that this for this product, you have several active substances, but you can combine two active substances to be more specific, and you can combine different species uh, for looking for products. The results will be organized in first the ones that have the two terms, and then more products that either have one term or the other term. So. Uh, I'm just going to do a final demo example of four we can use later uh, in the, in the um, when the use of cascade comes. We have or when we organize an event for the use of cascade. Um, I have the veterinarian wrote, writing this for me. So uh, we have the case of amoxicillin to treat a respiratory infection in mink or by a vet based in Latvia. So we just not go for easy things. We go for complex things. So. Uh, so first of all, we can type amoxicillin, and then you see the system returns four. So you can just press Control and keep selecting them, and then we can select. We press Apply, and then the system will return all of the amoxicillins register in the system in due time. So 
we have 1,820. So, but you are not going to scroll down looking for the product. So you're going to apply another filter. And like I said, the, the case was for a mink. So, but as you can see here, I do not have the option of mink. This doesn't mean that the UPD does not have the filter for mink. It means that there is no registered amoxicillin in products for minks in the UPD. So let's just go back a step and then, okay, so uh, how can I do give uh, some of this, uh, this type of product to a mink? Well, it's not easy to, you can't, there is various ways of administrating the, um, the, 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 the product, but maybe the easiest way is to select in drinking water or in drinking milk. So you can just add another level of filters and then again, apply to the results and see how many products uh, are available. So here we go again, waiting for the, the, for the system to filter down your choices. Also, I would like to highlight here, you, you can sort all of this either by alphabetically, last updated or authorization date. Now the system returns far less products in only two, 290, but again, this, this, the, the remain is Latvia. So let's go back again to, as a vet, I want to see if the product is available in my country, Latvia, again, the country doesn't show. So what we will, I would advise you is maybe look into a neighboring country. Lithuanian is not an option. Estonia, also not an option. So I went to check uh, the maps and I thought Poland would be a good option. So we select, because again, as I may recall, the legislation allows you to, uh, to, to buy medicines from a different member state. And then obviously we will have uh, four results and then this could be one possibility. You can say, but I don't speak Polish. Absolutely, you don't have to. But when you have a, cent a product that is, um, has a centrally authorization or a MRP DCP product, as this is this case, you will have an English name. And when you have an English name, you will definitely going to have a summary product characteristics in English. Otherwise, uh, if you speak Pol Polish, even better. So, uh, this for now concludes my uh, little demo. I'm going, we are going now to return to the presentation. So, in summary, how could that website support veterinaries on your daily practice? You can search by product name, you can search by active substance, species, pharmaceutical form, authorization country or availability country. Um, you can consult par uh, the SPCs if you want to clarify any adverse event, if you want to clarify any um, uh, withdrawal period that you think it's important to consult. Obviously, not for cats and dogs, but for other species, you can also check that. The portal has that information available for you, but you can read in detail the SPC if you need. You can check the authorization status of the product and you can confirm if the product is available in your country or in a neighboring country. With that, um, when this presentation is uh, published, I, uh, these two little boxes is two ways of you can reach out to us, either to ask us a question about the portal, or if you have seen something that is really something weird, you can report an issue. So just use them. But before we start the question and answer session, uh, I would like to highlight that we will continue to work on enhancing the portal's visibility enhancing these features. So we have in the pipeline, the improvement of the translations and the improvement of the search results by ATC vet code. We're gonna add new drop-down menus and this will include search by marketing authorization holders. And today I received suggestion of maybe another one or two. So we are going to dedicate some analysis to and, and the development team will look into it. Regarding the product indication, I know this is very important to veterinarians. I would like to apologize. It's not possible to have the indication on a portal because this is a very complex functionality that needs to be added to the portal, especially considering it has to be multilingual. This would mean a business rule equivalent of free text. So basically every national competent authority will type in the text. And this is prone to misspellings. It's prone to lack of updates. 
So for now, we don't have a machine reading solution. And because we don't want to implement a bad solution, we are not implementing this, but it's on our to-do list. But only time will tell when we will be able to do it. Uh, we are open as always as feedback. You can use this to up, uh, use two channels and uh, to help us improve the experience and respond to the needs of the user. We will now begin the Q&A. Uh, you have this option, so you can see that you can join by a Slido. I've seen some people typing in the chat. I would r recommend you to use Slido instead. It's easier because we will share the questions in with the audience and you will, we, I will uh, be able to respond. Uh, again, for, for time concerns, if we do have time, we do have around 30 minutes for Q&A. We don't have to, be, uh, to spend the 30 minutes in Q&A, but we have 30 minutes for your questions. And I will try to respond as much as possible in my capacity. Um, again, uh, I, will also, I will also like to highlight that I will only be able to respond to questions related with the UPD public portal and its functionalities, nothing else. So my colleague Sylvia and I will share um, the Slido and we can start uh, looking into your questions. Just a few more minutes, bear with us. Uh, so, I'm, thank you very much for already engaging. Um, expand the result download limit. That will be uh, hard. Uh, I understand the interest of expanding. I don't assume people have to, to export more than 500 products. But the thing is, if you think about it, if, I allow, if, I don't, if we don't set a limit to the download, that will have a huge impact on the performance of the portal because if someone if someone decides to download 45,000 products, that will have a huge impact. So, but uh, that is a functionality that um, it is suggested. But we now begin with the questions. Can the UPD be accessed by stakeholders than other veterinarians such as researchers? researchers apologies. Uh, well, the question is, what information is will be accessible for the public? So the only information that can be accessible for the public is exactly this one that I show you on the public portal. So any person, any uh, pet owner, veterinarian, farmer, um, researcher, um, marketing authorization holder, national competent authority, everyone can navigate the portal that I just demo. You don't need a special access to it. The data that you have there is data that is considered public and it's data that can be used and, and then you can consult. Okay. How can I download such results as a text files or Excel files? So Excel files is not possible currently because it, it takes a lot of space and it, it's a, it can become a very heavy file. And again, that will re, uh, impact massively the performance of the portal. We are trying to improve the CSV file, but for now, that's the only option. Uh, I just uh, I am in a talk. I just noticed some things with uh, the development team and they are going to um, address them in the future releases. But for now, we do not have plans uh, to uh, change the format of the download five file. Someone says, but there is Meloxicam register in Portugal. Why were there no results? Because I did exactly, this is, and I really appreciate this question. This is just because the marketing authorization holders have not set Portugal as, um, has not, have not updated in the products the availability for in Portugal. This means that if I search for Meloxicam and I search by Portugal in authorized in, you will definitely have results. But unless the marketing authorization holder changes the, uh, the, the, the status of the packages uh, in the UPD restricted area, and this is in the hands of the marketing authorization holders, 
you will not be you will not be able to to see available in. So this is obviously something that it's been addressing and we've been working hard together with the national competent authorities and work very hard together with the companies to improve the data. But this is why I was we were not able to identify meloxicum in available in uh, filter in for Portugal. Who should I contact if I cannot see a product that I know is authorized in my country? This will depend. Depend if it's a, again, if it's a nationally authorized product, it, you should definitely contact the competent authority in your country. If it's an, if it's a, uh, a product that it has a, a centrally authorization, it's the EMA, definitely. Um, so you should reach out to us. You can open a ticket in the UP, in service now, or you just ask, send us a query via ask EMA saying, I cannot find this. Where is this? It could be something. Uh, that we should we can investigate and provide you in an answer. If it's the product, if it's um, the RMS, so I didn't expand this on this too much, but products can be authorized uh, nationally, centrally, and there is something that it's called the MRP, DCP, and SRP, which means mutual recognition decentralized procedure or subsequent uh, recognized procedure. This means that first the product is approved in one country and then approved in the others. So if you don't see a product in your country, you need to check who is the reference member state and that information, it is available in the product detail page. You will always see reference member state. Those are the, co the countries responsible for the common, the, the common data. And they are should be the ones responsible for adding the other countries that uh, that are what what is we call concerned member states. So if a product is missing, just check who is the regulatory comp uh, the competent regulatory authority, and that will point you out to the to the pers to to the correct in the correct way path. Sorry. So if you read European Commission, straight to us. If you read another organization, then you'll see it's from a different country. You can reach out to them. What is the best way to search for vaccines? Uh, I would say ATC vet codes. Uh, we don't have, uh, I have received suggestions of adding a mask for um, filter for uh, homeopathics, for parallel trade, uh, for vet products. But the best way to search for vaccines is to either, uh, it's by the ATC vet code and that information is usually available on the, um, on the summary product characteristics. So uh, for now, this is best, but uh, we also have it uh, penciled down as a requirement to, because we know how important it is, uh, the search of vaccines for veterinarians. Uh, okay, I responded to that. A dog for medicines for dog was a dog for medicines for dog was performed. The list included dog, bitch, will a search for dog will also include products authorized for the target species dog. Yes. The short answer, yes. So um, I have a, a wonderful question. Kleindermycin is not in the substance, uh, yes, and I do not know how to, I cannot explain. I also noticed that, for, for example, meloxicam is not. So I open a, a ticket with my team and they are investigating. So you, can, you are able to type it in the search bar and you are also able to find it in the drop down menu. Correct. It's not in a subset index, but I also mentioned in the beginning, there are still some features we are going to deploy. They are still missing. And obviously the substance index and the medicine index is one of them. So just a little bit more patience, maybe a month or two, and then uh, hopefully that will be fixed. Um, will it be possible to search in the future for farmers? To group or ATC vet. ATC vet code is always possible. To, you have a mask there that um, you can use it. The the search is still not optimized um, because for now the system only returns that specific ATC vet code instead of returning um, all of the ATC vet codes that are above. But again, this is also some one feature that is going to be deployed and improved for the next uh, release. Um, 
Are there plans to include marketing authorization holder and or manufacturer as such filter? Marketing authorization holder, yes, and I think it's already in the next release. So, um, so just another couple of, just a little bit more patience. So hopefully by March you will have it available. Um, this I responded. The UPD uh, cannot be the only access that researchers can have to to the UPD information is via the public portal. How can I download the EPARs containing the results on environment risk assessment of me veterinary medicines containing one API and one go? I have in the room the best person to answer you. Thank you, Katarina. I don't know if I'm the best person, but I think that um, I understand um, the, the reasoning for this um, question. So the public assessment reports which are um, available um, in the public portal, they are published, of course, by the member states and for centrally authorized medicines that are published by us, provided that the product is for food producing species and um, the assessment in principle, um, if it was done after 2000, for this product should contain a section on the environmental risk assessment. Uh, and if this um, public assessment report is um, um, available, uh, uh, provided that, um, as usual, um, commercial confidential information um, is, is deleted, it should contain information about the assessment report and you will be able to um, have read, you will be able to read this document and to download it um, as a PDF. Uh, file, um, but you're also saying um, for one active substance in one go, there is no intention to merge uh, products which contain one active substance and have a possibility to download all um, attached documents for um, that substance or products. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, this was response was kindly provided by Behan, the UPD public uh, uh, UPD pu uh, product owner, and um, um, we will uh, refocus on the UPD public portal right now. Why are the results export limit to five hundred? Uh, what if the results exceed the limit? As I mentioned before, it's due to um, the. Um, Function, to ensure the performance of the portal. If the, the results are are exceeded, you need to filter down, I, uh, maybe select less species, maybe less active substances, maybe less countries, uh, but we need to ensure that the portal is accessible and easy to navigate and his, its performance is not affected or impacted by uh, someone that probably wants to download all the, the products. So apologies for that, but this is a way to prevent and to ensure the performance. Are the EPAR scientific discussion of centrally centralized products still available on UPD on the public site? I, I assume when you say still available on a public site, I assume I assume uh, the question is about the EMA corporate website. We are discontinuing the information. We are. This is a process is is taking a while, but we are gradually removing all information, outdated information from the EMA corporate website, and the only source of actual information or or up to date information is the veterinary medicines uh, information website. Having said that, um, the um, what is important to highlight is that if you see that some documents are missing, I would like to stress out that, that we can only publish documents after a commission decision. And that can take, uh, for example, if we have a change in the SPC uh, and uh, you see, but it was approved like three to two weeks ago, four weeks ago. Why it's not visible? It all depends if the if the it's depending on a European Commission's decision, which can take take up to sixty days. Uh, but it's, sometimes it's an issue affecting the, the the product. So just open a ticket with or a, a query in Ask EMA, and we'll be more than happy to respond to you. But as a final uh, response. 
all summary product characteristics and public assessment reports for centrally authorized products will be available in the Veterinary Medicines website. All the other documents are the responsibility of the relevant competent authorities, but for centrally authorized products, yes, all SPCs plus all uh, public assessment reports, naturally. I can explain a little bit more about it, the compare products, and I apologize for that. It was my, I, I missed this. So what I can do is I can drag very quickly the, 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 the share uh, rights to myself and I can quickly show you what is the, um, the compare option. So the compare option is um, a very quick, quick way to look into three products at the same time. For now, the system only allows three. Uh, it's just because from the perspective of the front end, the, the design, it's not, we try to increase it, but it, well, it didn't work that well. So let's select uh, again our favorite active substance, meloxicum to DAA. And let's select no, alpacas, I'm sure it doesn't have. Um, so let's go for cat and then apply. And I will show you now, and apologies for missing this during the demo. Okay. We have 59 products. Let's imagine that um, you want to compare this one with, I assume this is probably the same product on a different name, uh, this one and naturally, and let's go for a completely different one, this one. You click, you have to see, as you can see, you click on the box, tick on the box compare. Here on below, you have the message saying three medicines, max three selected. You press compare, and then he will ret retrieve the information and put it uh, in a very high level, uh, so you can actually look into uh, the different um, the different filters. Um, now, having said that, we usually have more information, so uh, we are also going to we are also uh, uh, aiming to work on this because I think. We should have more information here. In this case, uh, let me go back. Maybe it could be a fact that we selected cat. Let me see if by selecting a food producing species, we have more information. Uh, but the idea is to allow you a very quick high level um, note, but we are obviously going to improve these cards because we also want you to have, uh, if you have the link to the SPC immediately, uh, there so you can actually compare the product characteristics in one go. So these are the same. So let's select one of these. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a thing we're still uh, fixing. We need to clean the, the results. And actually it's not, I remember my team said that this, they, they weren't able yet to resolve this. So apologies for that. This you see how um, this is also Live uh, meloxicum. Let me also click clear here just in case to filter everything. It should be okay because now we have the total products here. Meloxicum. And now we go for cattle. And we again press apply. But no, we still have this. So what I think we have to do exactly. So this is you, ha you have to clean the list first of the compare medicines. And then you have to, this is something we identify that should be improved and more intuitive for the user. Um, cattle. And then apply. Sorry about the back and forth. Um, okay, it stopped. It does. It does. It's not working with me now. Um, I don't know which reason. Is still thinking. 
So, uh, but but overall, the idea is to put side by side three different products with immediate information. But uh, I would like to highlight that indeed this is a feature we are going to revisit because I still don't think it's optimal use for the veterinarian. And if you, here it is, finally. Uh, so let's compare this one with maybe something, com this one. And obviously let's go again to a different product and this one. So I'm just selecting random products just for the argument. And then here you see that um, it is the same thing. So basically you have information, quick information on the product name, active substance, roots of administration, solution for injection, it's a pharmaceutical form, apologies, target species and where is available. This is one of those examples that it means that the company has not filled in the data for this regarding the availability of Metamax or this product. Uh, but again, uh, in summary, this is the function to compare. Uh, feel free to use the Slido uh, suggestions because in Slido you also have a place to ask questions, but you also have a place to provide your feedback or, or suggest future improvements. Feel free to suggest uh, improvements here. We'll definitely need to improve this one. But if you have an, a better idea, just, just, just let us know. We love to collect feedback and we also love to, to hear from you. So thank you very much and apologies for, um, for taking so long to explain this. SPCs published in UPD are legally accepted. Naturally, they are official documents. So yes, uh, they they are documents uploaded by the competent authorities. So the SPCs that you have in the public portal are uploaded either by the EMA, so the official, the latest update information, unless the product has an issue, but that is a different uh, situation. And obviously, upload by the different competent authorities across Europe. So yes, they are legally um, accepted. Yeah, they're, they're legally binding documents, but only for the territories uh, for which they are valid. So um, a product authorized in Greece with um, Greek SPC, um, if it hasn't been authorized in Bulgaria, um, is um is not valid although that the product information is up to date the product has a valid market authorization for that territory in greece um is not for um it does not have um a market authorization validity in the in the um in another country unless it um was authorized different routes of um authorization um, okay, I see that we are going into more on the yes. regulatory path of, of questions. It's um, already quarter past four. I would suggest to see if there are any other questions particularly related to the uh, public portal and for all other questions which I see that um, colleagues, the practitioners are asking in case of... Um, we can put them at the end of the screen and I can speak very briefly about them, but without taking my answers as um, um, as valid. Thank you. Yes, yes. The time is, uh, we, I thought, uh, yeah, we just have a few more minutes. So I'm going to respond to those two questions. Are you considering add to add the pharmaceutical form? Uh, it's already added there. So uh, pharmaceutical form? Yes. No? No route of administration is. Uh, but I will take that note and with us and potentially that's an added uh, feature that we can do. For antibiotics, will you add a category? I can put it on our to-do list. We have a way to, to identify them. So this could be something that I can take also on board. Please advise at this point, the time availability status is not provided for all products and this functionality was not available functionally until recently. Uh, that is not accurate. Please, Behan, compliment. Yes, um, in relation to the, um, to the availability status, when these um, over 45,000 products, when they were uploaded into the, to the product database, um, we have um, agreed that uh, all the products that have a valid market authorization uh, 
date as of 28th of January 2022 should be um, uploaded in, in the system. And um, in many cases, um, the information on the availability in a particular country um, hasn't been populated. You may see, for example, uh, in, um, on the under the availability status, you could see no information not available, uh, NA not present, um, etc. And um, we are also liaising with the marketing authorization holders, and um, we understood that up until now the marketing authorization holders were primarily focused on the. Um, other obligations that they have to uh, fulfill because there were some uh, deadlines uh, for them to comply with and now they are they will be concentrating on updating and correcting the availability status of products being marketing not marketed in which country uh, etc so please bear with us and um, availability status gradually will be updated but this is the responsibility of the marketing authorization holders and um, we even uh, as a regulatory uh, authority we cannot uh, make the or change the availability status on behalf of the marketing authorization holders thank you thank you uh, we are approaching the the our limit um, uh, so we are going to you can i wouldn't uh, we're going to keep slido open for until uh, the until uh, the the end of the week because we really want to hear your feedback on the on the features that you like to see and also uh, to to hear a little bit more about what ideas you might you would like to contribute so there is the active poll so on one hand you have the possibility of asking questions on the other one an active poll so just keep this will be open until friday friday uh, close of business so you keep just uh, you please suggest other features that you like to see and we will look into it. Uh, the questions that were not answered, I would kindly ask you to submit them via Ask EMA. They will come to me, so I will respond to them. No worries. And um, with that, I would like to finish my presentation. I've been t speaking for quite a while now. You must be. Um, exhausted. Uh, I will now would like to give the floor to Nancy the Brain from the FA so she can uh, uh, close the event with her final words. I want to thank you very much for, for this really nice webinar. So my name is Nancy Brianna. I'm the executive director of FE. And, and first of all, uh, my thanks goes enormously to the colleagues of the European Medicines Agency. For the webinar today, where you saw that Katerina on the spot tried to answer all your questions, but also for the efforts done to, to develop this public portal and this database. I think uh, we can be very proud to have this database and in the European Union. And to my knowledge, we are the only region that has such a database. And I think that's also the reason that we see visitors from outside Europe, like from the US, going to look at our database. I want to thank them also for continuously working on improving this public portal and making it more user-friendly and to make it easier to access the information needed by veterinarians. And, and you, if you have been watching the portal a little bit over the years, uh, months, you will, have, you will have seen the enormous improvements made. Secondly, I want to thank the many veterinary colleagues who joined today and the enormous active uh, participation in the Slido. I think this really has been very useful. I hope useful for you, useful for us, and I think also useful for, for the AMA colleagues, because veterinarians veterinary practitioners, you are the target audience and, and this portal has been created for veterinarians to easily find information. So please use it and tell your veterinary colleagues about it. It is not fixed, it is still continuously being improved, 
Um, so if you have suggestions for improvement, if you see a product missing, um, contact uh, EMA via Ask MEA. Um, lastly, as mentioned already before, we are planning two more webinars this year, uh, joint webinars, both in the field of antimicrobial uh, resistance. And the next one will be on the a list of antimicrobials which are reserved for human use only. The registration normally will open in March, so please stay tuned for that one. So with that, thanks a lot to all the colleagues at EMA. Thank you, Katerina, for the enormous um, nice demo and answering all the questions, but also all the colleagues behind you who who done so much work. And thank you all for your active participation. And please continue to spread the news about the existence of this portal so that we can um, all use it. Wishing you all a very excellent further afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for attending. Goodbye.